ready. All right, well, I want to talk to you tonight, amen. I want to teach, praise the Lord, from the thought, from the theme, get in order, amen. That's what I'll be teaching uh, from tonight, get in order. Uh, You know, I don't know about you, but one of the most frustrating things uh, in life is uh, to need to use a machine, uh, whether that's a drink machine, a snack machine, a register, an ATM, or any other type of machine, only to discover a sign that says, out of order. Uh, uh, You know, it's a promising appearance. It looked like it would provide relief for my thirst, my hunger, my need only to let me down because the sign on the machine said, out of order. It doesn't fulfill its purpose and can't operating according to the design it was made for because it was out of order. Uh, if you've attended, you know, if you're part of our ministry here, if you have listened maybe even to some of our lives, if you've been a part, praise the Lord, uh, for, for more than just a few months, then, you, then, then, then you've probably heard me mention order, amen, on more than one occasion because one of the things that we are big on here is order. You know, Scripture declares that all things be done as it relates to decency and order. God is a God of order. God is a God of order. Uh, When we look throughout the word of God, uh, we have established that God is a God of order. Creation begins the revelation that God operates in steps. Mm -hmm. God operates in steps. He creates the sky, then the birds, water, then fish. And then this propensity towards order continues even in the pattern of worship. Uh, you know, he gives us an order in how we are to worship, an order into how we are to operate, an order into how we are to pray. It is um, penetrated how the, it penetrated how the children of Israel marched from one place to the next place, each tribe in their ordered place. Even when you look throughout the Word of God, it, it, it carries over to the Church of the New Testament how services were conducted and positions of authority were established. What am I saying to you tonight? Order matters to God. Order matters to God. Therefore, if order matters to God, it ought to grab our attention and make sure that we understand and operate in lockstep with His order that he prescribes because because we recognize that if we are out of order, then we will not see intended results. I'm going to say that again. If we are out of order, we will not see intended results. There is an order to things if we're going to see right results. There is an order when we begin to put God first in our lives that things begin to change. There is an order. And I want to submit to you tonight that what is true of Coke machines and cash registers is also true, even about our finances, even about our money. When it is out of order, oftentimes it doesn't work properly. Praise the Lord. And I don't know about you, but, but, but I, 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 I'm, I'm operating and want the blessing of the Lord upon my life. Praise the Lord. Because the Bible says the blessings of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow with it. Praise the Lord. I think far too often we don't get uh, the order right in our finances, and and then as a result, uh, we hope against hope, we pray, we believe, and desire blessings that don't arrive simply because we're operating out of order while foolishly expecting results that only come from operating in order. Folks, I'm established that God wants to bless us. I'm established in the fact the Bible says that the promises of God are yes and amen in him. But if I'm going to receive what God has promised, I have to walk in a certain order. So so I want to teach tonight on how to walk in the blessing. I, I want you to see beyond your wildest dreams. I want you to see that God wants you to have more than enough. God is not just a God of just enough. He is a God of more than enough. And so I'm teaching this tonight. I want to get something to you rather than something from you. I said I want to get something to you rather than something from you. 
you know, because, you know, here at Hosanna Family Church, we're about to uh, make a shift in the realm of the spirit. We've started off this year with consecration. We've started off this year with fasting and praying. And now we're preparing, coming up, praise God, Sunday after next for our first fruit seed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we're believing that God is going to do miraculous things. And we can expect, amen, the miraculous from God, praise the Lord, when we put him first. See, 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 putting God first is all about order. It's all about right priority. And so in order for that to happen, we must understand some things tonight. Are y'all with me tonight? My first point, order dictates outcome. Why don't you type that in? Order dictates outcome. Yeah. Order dictates outcome. Order dictates outcome. What are you saying tonight, teacher? Amen. Right order, blessed. Wrong order, cursed. I said right order, blessed. Wrong order, cursed. Wrong order, complications. Wrong order, confusion. Can I teach tonight? If you don't believe me, then build a house and then draw blueprints or try to get permits. No, no, no. You got things out of order. You, you don't build the house until you get the permit. You, you don't build the house until you draw up the blueprints. You know, if you don't believe that, 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 that order dictates outcome, go to the car lot, drive the car home, and then try to go in and work out the payment details. No, no. First, you got to do some things first, and then you get the car. If you don't believe me, go to the bank and withdraw money, then open an account. No, I can't make a withdrawal until I first open the account first. If you don't believe me, go uh, to a garden and try to harvest before you plant a seed. No, no, no. I don't get a harvest until I plant a seed. Out of order. Uh, what am I saying tonight? Order dictates outcome. And when the season now, as I was praying, when the season now, the harvest is God giving you what you want it to happen and what you want it to possess. I said, when a time now that the harvest is God giving you what you want it to happen and what you want it to possess. How many know, folks, we reap what we sow? So the harvest is God giving you what you want it to happen and what you want it to possess. In other words, if I want the right things in my life, I got to make sure that I am sowing the right kind of seeds. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If I'm getting the wrong things in my life, I need to check the type of seeds that I'm sowing. The harvest is God giving you what you want it to happen, hallelujah, and what you want it to possess. Oh, I know I'm teaching right tonight. See, I don't want to live a raggedy life without my priorities in order. Scripture says, there is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof, hallelujah, is destruction. I want God to bless me, and I want favor not just with man, but favor with God. Is that all right? Praise the Lord. And so as we're starting, have started this year, and we're coming into March, amen, ending, praise God, the first quarter of this year, hallelujah, we want to make sure that God is first place in our life, praise God, hallelujah, amen, because the harvest is what I want it to happen, and what I want to possess. See, when you do things out of order, the results change. Mm. I said, when you do things out of order, the results change. You know, And we should have learned this truth in grade school. Yeah, we should have learned this truth when our parents or, or our school or when you was in middle school or high school. I don't know if this new generation know about it. I don't know if they have locks like this now. But how many remember in, gray, in, in middle school or high school when you had to put a, 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 a lock on your locker, they had combination locks? And I don't care if you had the right code. If you didn't put those numbers in order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you didn't, if you if, if you didn't remember, turn to the left first, and then and then two turns to the right, and then and then hallelujah, straight to the last number. It doesn't matter if you got the numbers right. If you got the sequence off. You wasn't going to open that lock because order matters. Praise God. You can have the right things in place, but you have to do it in a certain order. Oh, my God. 
There is an intended outcome attached to the resources that God places in our hands. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the intended outcome is blessed. God wants you blessed. I said God wants you blessed. God wants to bless the resources he has entrusted to us so that they give us further and we can accomplish more than we've ever imagined. Scripture says now unto to him that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can think or ask according to the power that works on the inside of us. So the order, however, the order of how we handle them dictates the outcome. Do you want to be blessed or cursed, clean or dirty? God makes order clear. I said God makes order clear. You know, the order was established by Moses. Even throughout the first five books of the Bible, Moses talks about the resources a total of 13 times. And in doing so, hallelujah, uh, uh, not only gives instruction, he gives revelation about order, praise God, by which he calls them. And he said, you know what? If you want God to bless you in a phenomenal way, put him first. Yeah, 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 put him first. Give me Exodus 22 and 29, praise the Lord. He said it over about 13 times in Scripture, over and over again, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, I'm reading the uh, uh, English Standard Version, Exodus 22 and 29. It says, you shall not delay to offer from the fullness of your harvest and from the overflow of your presses. The The firstborn of your sons you shall give to me. So we see God begins teaching order by talking about the greatest resources that we have, our children. You know, it's funny to me that some people willingly give their kids back to God, but won't give him, hallelujah, their other resources. You got to tell God, listen, everything I have belongs to you. You know, the old folks, you sing a song, I'm yours, Lord, everything I've got, everything I am and everything I'm not. I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see. See if I can be completely yours. We got to be willing to give all that we have back unto the Lord. Give me Exodus 34 and 26, the English Standard Version. Exodus 34 and 26, it says, The best of the first fruits of your ground you shall bring to the house of the Lord your God. The Lord said, Wait a minute, I want the best. I want your first fruit. I, I want your best. Praise God. Give me Leviticus 23 and 10. Leviticus 23 and 10. Over and over again, here's what the word of the Lord says. Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, when you come into the land which I will give you and reap its harvest, you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruits of the harvest to the priest, and he shall weigh the sheaf before the Lord so that you may be accepted. In other words, God said, I don't want you moving forward without acknowledging me. I don't want you moving forward without, praise the Lord, giving me a sign that I'm first in your life. Praise the Lord. So it wasn't just in in money, praise, it wasn't just in an offering, but it was in their dedication. It included an offering, praise the Lord, but it was in their dedication. Give me Proverbs uh, 3, 9, and 10. Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all of your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. My God, honor the Lord. Recognize the Lord. Hallelujah. Look to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And as a result, God says, if you honor me with what is first, if you honor me with your wealth, if you honor me, praise God, with your diligence, praise God. Hallelujah. Your bar- My promise is <laughs> barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. Oh, is it a good word tonight? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give me Ezekiel 44 and 30. Ezekiel 44 and 30. The scripture says, the first of all first fruits of every kind and every contribution of every kind from all your contribution shall be for the priest. And you shall give to the priest the first of your dough. Watch this. Here it is. Woo! Hallelujah. To cause the blessing. (laughs) <laughs> to rest on your house, my, 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 to cause the blessing. So the Lord says, when you honor me first, you cause the blessing to rest on your house. 
I don't know about you folks, but I want the blessing of the Lord to rest on my house. I don't care who's in the White House. I don't care what's going on in the economy. I don't care what's going on, praise God, with unemployment. I don't care what's going on with up and down. I want the blessing of the Lord on my house. I want the blessing of the Lord to rest upon my marriage, to rest upon my children, to rest upon my business, to rest upon everything that I'm operating in. And so, and so the Lord says, when there is a principle of first in place, Woo! You, you cause the blessing to rest upon your house. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 23, he was rebuking, I feel the anointing, glory to God. He was rebuking religious leaders for their lack of justice and mercy. And he says to them, hallelujah, tithe on everything you make, praise God. And hallelujah, praise God. You, you, you should give. See, 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 the Hebrew word for first fruit is translated a promise to come. My God, hallelujah. And have me know there is one who never breaks the promise. Hallelujah. God never breaks the promise. Is that all right? And he told him, he told him in Ezekiel, when you put me first, you cause the blessing to rest upon your house. It's a promise to come. Hallelujah. The Israelites saw the first fruit, watch this, as an investment to their future. So I'm telling you, when you're in proper alignment with God, when you put God first in your life, you're making an investment in your future. God told them if they brought the first fruits to him, he would bless all that came afterward. In Romans, it says, if the first be holy, the rest is also holy. They understood that there was a promise connected to order. It's not, God, I'm going to do my own thing and then acknowledge you later. No, God, I'm going to acknowledge you first. First, hallelujah, I'm going to lean not to my own understanding, all my ways acknowledge you, knowing that you will direct my path. There is a blessing in proper order. It's time for you and I to get in order and stay in order. Woo! Let me slow down and calm down just a little bit tonight because when you keep first things first through faith and obedience, you turn God's promise into provision. Hallelujah, because he wants to see his people who honor him succeed. Is that all right? Hallelujah. God wants you to succeed and prosper, praise the Lord, and he desires it his way, not our way. And so when we begin to talk about this, get in order, praise the Lord. The Bible, rep- re- uh, the Bible references first fruits or first things or devoted things no less than 32 times in Scripture. When you come into the land which I give you. When you come into the blessing that I give you, don't forget about me. Hallelujah. Give me the first of the harvest. When you come into the new year, I want you to acknowledge me first. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says it's a divine establishment of God's order is actually the root, the foundation that governs the rest. And God says, if your foundation is right, I will bless the rest. God claims the first of all things. It rightfully belongs to him. What are you saying, Bishop? Hallelujah. Matthew 6 and 33. Come on, you know this, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. But if you would just get the first part right, all these things will be added unto you. God's add, God adds the things. To you, when the foundation is is the, when the foundation is the place to be built upon, God says, "I have no problem prospering you, but I want your foundation right. Me first. When we honor God with first fruit, He will unlock everything for the remainder of the year. Anybody believe that? And I stand in agreement that 2021 will be a year of unprecedented blessings in your life. It's about giving God first, acknowledging him first, acknowledging him first in the morning. When you wake up in the morning, it ought to be God. I thank you. Thank you for another day. Thank you that you woke me up this morning. It's acknowledge him first in your planning. Praise the Lord. All that you want to do this year. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God, I'm acknowledging you first in everything that I plan to do. And God, I'm going to make an offering. First fruit was inclusive of an offering. Praise God. When you give your first fruit, you're planting a seed for the remainder of the year. And I'm so excited because this year is the first year that we're going to have a hybrid first fruit. Praise the Lord. We have people online that will be giving and people, praise the Lord, that are in the sanctuary that will be giving. Hallelujah. And you're saying, God, I acknowledge you by sowing a seed. And I know that you're going to bless the remainder of the year. 
You know, C.S. Lewis said it like this, when first things are first, second things are not suppressed but increased. Ooh, isn't that good? Isn't that good? Praise the Lord. When first things are first, then second things are not suppressed but they are increased. When first things are first, woo, second things are not suppressed, but increased. Don't you know you can't be God giving no matter how hard you try? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, and, and so we need to move into that place. So, so when they came into, the, into a new year or a, a new season or harvest season, they gave God a pr- portion of the first harvest. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so first fruit is one whole offering. Those that want to participate, that will participate. Praise God. Either that's one day's pay, one week's pay, or one month. Or you want to do two or three days. But it's one whole offering. Praise the Lord. Giving God to say, God, I acknowledge you as good in my life. And I believe that you're going to bless me. Giving our first fruit reminds us that God is the ultimate priority. When I wave that seed before the Lord, I acknowledge him as Lord and first in my life. It shows, it's a representation in the earth. It shows that we are obedient to him and that we can be trusted with more. And the reason we can be trusted with more is because we honor him first. See, I know everybody wants God to bless them, but can God trust you? Mm. Woo, but can God trust you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's my second point tonight. Order reveals importance. Somebody type that in. Order reveals importance. Order reveals importance. See, I don't want you to come into this first season with an old revelation. I want it fresh on your mind tonight. Order reveals importance. See, by order, some of us are saying we honor. See, when when we don't do things in right order, when we put God last, hallelujah, we're saying, God, we, we honor our landlord more than we honor you. When you put God on a back burner, you said, God, anything else in my life I put before you. Simply by order that we handle our resource, how we handle our resources reveal what's most important to us. See, the blessing is commanded, watch this, hallelujah, when it's done in order. See, first is only first if it's it's first. (laughs) I know that's simple, praise God. First is only first if it is first. Anything other than first means a second, Lord Jesus. Anything other than first means a second. That's out of order, that's leftovers. And a lot of folks say, God, you know I love you, but we put any and everything before God. Woo! We put any and everything before our relationship with God. You you cannot call it first fruit if it's the last thing that you do. Is that all right? Praise the Lord. First means first. Come on, type it in. First means first. See, order reveals importance. But also remember, when we get the order right, it will dictate the outcome. What is the greatest commandment that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul? Praise the Lord. And we we have to move into that place that we understand that. Give me Malachi 3. Malachi 3. I hope this is blessing you tonight because I feel a teaching anointing. Malachi 3, verse 8 through 12. English Standard Version. Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have you robbed me in your tithes and contributions? You're cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and thereby put me to the test. I told you this a couple uh, the other Sunday. The only place God says to test him is in the area of finances. Praise God. Almost like I dare you, praise the Lord, says the Lord of hosts, and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven. For you and pour down for you blessing until there is no more need. I like that. (laughs) My God, I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil. And your vine and your field shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Then all the nations will call you blessed. For you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. And God says, praise the Lord. I just want to be first. I want you to acknowledge me. God says, try me, follow the instructions, do exactly as I've commanded you to do. Follow the exact pattern, test him, and we'll find out that order will dictate the outcome. 
See, sometimes you may have the amount right, but the order wrong. Woo, Lord Jesus. See, when you put God first, all other things fall into their proper place or drop out of our lives. Oh, I'm going to say that again. When you put God first, all other things fall into proper place or will drop out of, your, out of our lives. When you put God first, all other things will fall into their proper place or drop out of their, uh, drop out of their lives. Because our love for the Lord will govern our claim, will govern the claims for our affection, the demands for our time, the interests we pursue, and the order of our pro- See, when you put God first, when you love Him right, it's gonna govern what you do with your time, the interests you pursue, the order of your priorities. My God, my God, hallelujah, putting God first in your priorities. You know, we're in an hour right now, folks, and there are so many things that clamor for our attention and devotion, our jobs, our kids, our spouses, our hobbies, so many demands, so many distractions if we allow it to. And we have to be careful not to let them become more important or more of a priority than our relationship with God. The first of the Ten Commandments states, you will have no other God before me. Is that how your Bible reads in Exodus 20 and 3? And then Deuteronomy 5 verse 8 and 9 says, you must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or in the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God and will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. That's what the New Living Translation reads. Hallelujah. Yet how many of us have allowed things to occupy our time? Oh, oh, I know you may be getting a little uncomfortable tonight, but, but how have we allowed things to occupy our time, other things to occupy our money, other things to occupy our thoughts and our attention that have taken the place of where God has supposed to be? He said, I will not have any other gods before me. Next point, watch for distractions. Watch for distractions. Anything can become a God to us. Woo! Hallelujah. I said anything can become a God to us. Anything we worship or put an excessive amount of time into, if we're not careful, can become an idol, can become a God to us. So you think first root is just about money. It's not just about money. Praise the Lord. It's about a placement. And I want to make sure that, God, you are first in my life. You know, even your feelings can become a God if you allow them to control you. Yeah, your God is your feelings. You beat according to how you feel at any given moment. You beat according, you led by your emotions. You led by your flesh. That's become a God to you. Even your feelings can become a God if you allow them to control you. And you need to ask yourself, am I bowing down to God and his word or to my feelings? See, see, this walk ain't based on feelings, folks, because every day you may wake up and not feel like being saved. You may wake up and not feel like walking in love. You may wake up and not feel like walking in faith, but it ain't based on my feeling, praise the Lord. I'm not bowing down to my feeling. This goes beyond how I feel. Every day you don't feel like praising him, but it ain't about what I feel like. I command my hands to praise him. I command my voice to praise him. I command my feet to praise him. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You got to put him first. Come on, type that in. Put him first. And there'll be distractions in your life. You know, it's not just bad things that's distraction. It can be good things that's distractions. Put them first. See, people who refuse to honor God and follow his wisdom in their decisions, it causes us to be bogged down with worry, resentment, and bitterness. But what's what's ruling your life? When you refuse to honor God and follow his wisdom in in, in their instruction, you, you, you cause yourself to be bogged down with worry, resentment, bitterness. Can I teach tonight? Sometime if you don't keep that stuff in check, it'll show up as sickness, and disease in your body? Is that all right? We, no, we must put him first. Is that all right? And now you're walking in worry, and now you didn't cause your blood pressure to go up, and now you're so worried that you're getting sick. Praise the Lord. And now you're so bitter, you're so bitter, and so much locked up on the inside of you. Now, I don't know about you folks, but I made a decision to walk in wholeness and health. I'm going to let Jesus be first in my life. 
Put him first. Put him first. You know, I've been walking in this thing for, for, for some years now, and I've had people come up to me and say, hallelujah, praise God. Can you pray that God make me do right? And I thought about that after a while. Can, can I pray that God make you do right? No, I can't pray that God make you do right. No, God gives you free choice. Can I teach? Living right is your decision. Doing right is your choice. Watch this. Now, he'll give you the ability. He'll give you his word. He'll give you the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But you got to make up in your mind. You know, the old folks would say, you got to have a made up mind. Praise the Lord. He ain't going to make you do anything. Praise God. But if you yield your will unto him, if you make up your mind to change your mind, you first have to have a desire. And then he'll give you the ability. He'll give you his word. He'll give you the Holy Ghost. But you still have the choice. Oh, you still got to have a choice. You at the bar and you've been struggling with alcohol and you've been struggling with addiction. Talking about God sent me in the bar to help somebody else. You better help yourself and stay home. <laughs> you got to know what you're strong enough to handle. Praise the Lord. You want God to help you. Praise God. But you got to make better decisions. How do you at the bar struggling with drinking and stuff till God sent me in there to help somebody else? You better stay home. Everybody you can't take with you. You better stay home and stay free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lest you try to help somebody else and you be locked up in bondage again. Hallelujah. You know, you, 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 you want to be free from lust. Praise the Lord. And you got issues in your flesh with every movie you look at before going to bed got bumping and grinding in it. I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. And you're going to sleep with that stuff in your spirit. Is that all right? But you're praying, Lord, make me a sanctuary. You're praying one thing, but your actions say something different. Can I talk? You got to get it in order. You got a spending spirit, but every day you at the mall and you praying, Lord, Lord, help me be debt free. Lord, help me save. Lord, help me. Praise the Lord. L L hallelujah. Uh, you, Lord is sending you some help, but you got to stay out the mall. <laughs> hallelujah. Praise God. You have to want it. And then you have to make decisions. I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. Praise God. You got to get some things in order. You got to get some things in order. And it's amazing to me, praise God, that, that you got to check yourself sometime because, you, you know, there's been some times that I've counseled people and it's amazing. You know, you know sometimes I counsel people and, and it's amazing. People come and sit, will sit in my office, praise the Lord, and tell me all the time, you know, I felt God tell me to do that, praise God, hallelujah, but I did my own thing anyway. Is that all right? And so now I'm very cautious with my decision, with, with my counsel, praise God. And so I'm in a place now that, listen, if you override, if you overrode the Holy Ghost, then don't waste my time. Hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah. You, you know, if you didn't listen to the Holy Ghost, then, then, then are you going to listen to what the Holy Ghost is going to speak through me? And see, you got to make up in your mind that, God, I want your wisdom. I want your counsel. Is that all right? And I'm going to stop quenching the Holy Ghost. I'm going to stop grieving the Holy Ghost. Praise God, hallelujah, because if you didn't hear the Holy Ghost, you ain't going to hear me. You got wisdom and didn't listen to that. You don't need no more sessions until you're ready to make up in your mind that say, God, yes, I surrender. You don't need no more sessions. You, you don't need no more therapy until you make up in your mind, I'm ready to change. Until you're ready to put some things first. Is that all right? And people won't counsel from you and they won't even listen to the Holy Ghost. You didn't listen to the last instruction. So we don't need to have no more if you're not ready to make up your mind. You don't need to come to the altar if you ain't ready to be free. You, you don't need to come to the altar if you ain't ready to give it up. God is not going to override your will. But you know who gets grace? It's people that say, God, I, be, I want you to be first place in my life. I want you to be my first love. I want to love you with my whole heart. I want to love you with my whole mind. That's folk that will get grace. It's people that want God to be first. If not, you know, stay where you at till you're ready. Oh, I know that's hard on a Wednesday night, praise God. But if you ain't really ready, don't play with it. Don't waste your time. Don't waste other people's time. Is that all right? You got to, when you, when you come back, when you're ready to appreciate wisdom, order has to come back. 
Order has to come back even in your conversation. I said order has to come back even in your conversation. Hallelujah. You know, it's immaturity. It is such uh, uh, immaturity to sit around the table, praise God, and want people to have respect. Hallelujah. Praise God. And you sit around the table and you badmouth preachers. It is such immaturity to sit around the table and bad math, bad math preachers or your preacher or your pastor or even bad mouth me if that's the case, but you want your children to hear what the preacher got to say. <laughs> you sit around the table and bad mouth the church, praise God, and you want your church to be a part. You want your children to benefit from that anointing. You want your spouse to benefit from that anointing. Is that all right? Hallelujah. And some of your children won't serve God today, praise God, because you didn't bad mouth and gave the church a bad rap. Out of order. You bad mouth the pastor, you bad mouth the pastor before them. Is that all right? You bad mouth the church. Hallelujah. And now they don't want to hear nothing nobody say because they put them all in the same batch. Oh, Lord Jesus. You got to be careful even what you say around the kitchen table. See, what you don't know is some things that you're saying could be hurting your child. It's about an integrity level. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. I said it's about integrity level. Because they got to listen to somebody. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you, you know, you know, you know, my, my children, my oldest children are at a stage, praise the Lord, where they're teenagers now, where you know, they love people and they get connected to people, and they'll say sometime, praise the Lord, well, Daddy, you know, why don't this person come to church? And why did this person not there anymore? Is that all right? Hallelujah. Praise God. And why this one don't come? You know, and, I, and I've learned to talk above it. I said, I've learned to talk above it. Is that all right? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because, I, you know, you know, you know, there's some situations, but sometimes unless your child is high enough to understand it, praise God, it's no need for you to go into detail about something. Is that all right? Because sometimes you don't want to give people wrong, a wrong reflection of church. Because even though church may have its issues, it's still a glorious church. Praise God. And you don't want to say plant bad seeds and put uh, bad taste in people's mouth. Is that all right? So when you grow up, praise God, they don't want to come to church. Praise God. You got to understand some folks. Your stance is a witness to other people. You shouldn't call your child's teacher dumb. I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. You shouldn't call, you, you shouldn't call your child's teacher dumb in front of your child. Because that's what's wrong now with a lot of us. We didn't, we didn't talk about the teacher so bad. And then your child walk into the classroom thinking they better than the teacher. Hallelujah. With, with a sense of entitlement. It's an integrity issue. Your child needs that teacher to get through that class to accomplish that grade. Oh, I can't talk in here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so, and so you got to bridle your tongue. I don't know why I'm going here. And use wisdom. In what you say. Some things may be true, but I don't need to say it in front of you. Because you still got to get through that class to get to the next grade. You bad mouthing. Is that all right? Hallelujah. You bad mouthing a preacher. Hallelujah. But, but, your, but your son or your daughter is going to need a preacher. Your daughter is going to need a preacher. How shall they hear except that be a preacher? Is that all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because sometimes you can't discern and sometimes you put everybody in the same category. Though you know there's some bad apples in the bunch, praise the Lord, but everybody ain't, ain't crooked. God's going to use somebody to help them in their walk. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So establish your habit. I'm almost done. Establish your habit. Somebody say get in order. Somebody say get in order. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. G give me, uh, uh, you know, the key to abundant life, he told Abraham. Give me Genesis 17 and 1 in the Amplified. Praise the Lord. You got to establish a habit of living for God. Woo! Establish a habit for living for God. God said to Abraham, walk habitually before me with integrity knowing that you're always in my presence and be blameless and complete in obedience to me. Notice that God instructed Abraham to be habitual in walking with him and living for him. Abraham, keep me first. I want it to be a habit that you acknowledge me. 
I want you, I want it to be a habit that you're in my presence. Hallelujah. You establish daily habits, worship, prayer, being consistent in the things of God. Is that all right? Praise the Lord. Keeping him first. You got to get to the place. I love the word. It's amazing how it contains wisdom, encouragement, comfort, inspiration. This is about a lifestyle. Hallelujah. Somebody type in lifestyle. This is about a lifestyle. It ain't about about just what you do for the kingdom. It's about a lifestyle. If the only time you're able to be a light for Christ is when you operate through your gifts, and that's the only time you're good at being kingdom, praise God, then what about when, when you're not operating in your gift? See, if the only time you shine in the light of God, praise God, is when you operate through your gift, then what good are you to God's kingdom when you put them down? When you're not operating in your gift, can you actually love people? Do you still treat people with care, honor, kindness? Do you know how to treat people respectfully? Do you exemplify the character of Christ in your daily life? See, gifts and callings, they come without repentance. You can be highly gifted and extremely out of line in your personal life all at the same time. I'll say that again. You can be extremely gifted, highly gifted, and out of line in your personal life all at the same time. See, being a gifted person doesn't require you to be holy, nor does it, hallelujah, nor does it come with any set of kingdom prerequisite. Is that all right? You gifted in that area, praise God. But I don't know about you, but but I don't want to be gifted over here my life out of order. If you, want to be, if you call yourself a follower of Jesus, for real, you must know that he requires more than your gift. Woo, the Bible says if you offend somebody, leave your gift at the altar and go get it right. <laughs> My God, hallelujah. If you cause an offense, you need to get it right. I don't care how anointed, I don't care how, how gifted, how well, how talented you are. God is interested in your lifestyle and putting him first. Hallelujah. Give me 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 through 11. I hope this is helping somebody. Hallelujah. My next point, you are seedy, seedy. Praise God, you are seedy. Hallelujah, S-E-E-D-Y. You are seedy, praise God. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 through 11 says, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, uh, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, my, 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 you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever." Now, he who, don't miss this, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. I receive that. So that you can be generous on every occasion and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving of God. Thanksgiving to God. God can pour the blessings in astonishing ways so that you're ready for anything and everything. My, 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 my. You ought to receive the word tonight. The most generous God who gives, watch this, seed to the farmer that becomes bread for your meals is more than extravagant with you. This is what the scripture says. He gives you something you can then give away, Mm -hmm. which grows into full-formed lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way. Hallelujah. And we need to understand that the classic lesson is if you sow sparingly, what the Bible says, you'll reap sparingly. Uh, One scholar said, he who is not liberal with what he has does deceive himself when he thinks he would be more liberal if he had more. Ooh, that's good right there. (laughs) He who is not liberal with what he has does deceive himself when he thinks he would be liberal if he had more. See, the writer here in Corinthians is trying to teach us that we must participate with God to determine the return. 
That's my next point. I'm almost done. Participate with God. Type that in. Participate with God. Participate with God. Hallelujah. The writer is trying to teach us that we must participate with God to determine the return. Oh, I said you got a return coming in your life and you got to participate with God. Luke 6 and 38. Give. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. Here it is. With the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you again. Proverbs 11 and 25 says, The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. See, I could teach you that it really isn't about the amount. It's really about the attitude. Mm. See, one thing that God always wants us to walk in is to have an attitude check. Praise the Lord. Because God loves a cheerful or hilarious giver. Come on, don't shut me down tonight. Sometimes the best giving occurs when it makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> I said sometimes the best giving occurs when it makes absolutely no sense. Hallelujah. Praise God. Have you ever sold when it made absolutely no sense? Praise God. Hallelujah. Have you ever gave when it looked like you should be keeping every dime in your pocket? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ha have you ever gave? Praise God. Have you ever sold? Have you ever been a blessing? Praise God. And you said, God, I need somebody to be a blessing to me. Hallelujah. Sometimes it be like that. Praise God. God, but when you do it with the right attitude, when you say, God, I don't have much, but such as I have, I give unto thee. That's what the Bible says. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Sometimes, praise God, it hurts to sow. Sometimes you ain't, you don't have it like you want to have it. Praise God. But you're still being a blessing in what God had gave. Sometimes you gave with tears. Sometimes you had to praise with tears in your eyes. Sometimes you lifted up your hands while you were hurting. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Sometimes you gave God a dance with tears rolling down your eyes. Praise God. But you said, God, you're such generous. I'm going to give back to you. I could point out to you in Mark 12 where Jesus observes and then celebrate, celebrates the widow who gave two cents compared to the thousands given by religious leaders. And the scripture says, though she gave, Hallelujah. Two mites, praise God. She gave more than all of them. It wasn't about the amount. I can't get nobody. It was about her attitude. See, generosity is not about your bank account. It's about what's in your heart. My, 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 my. In fact, I'm not really talking to you or not tonight about, praise God, just being generous inside the church, but I'm talking about how it can invade society in your community. It's a start in the house, but it carry over into other houses. Although generosity really isn't about, hallelujah, money at all, it's usually best revealed in money. See, generosity is about forgiveness. It's about grace. I'm almost done. It's about friendship. It's about love. However, usually if a person is stingy in sowing money, they'll be hesitant to sow anything else. Hallelujah, hallelujah, because God says, hallelujah, where, where your heart is, pray where your treasure is, your heart is also. Sometimes if a person is stingy with sowing money, oftentimes they'll be hesitant to sow anything else. Sometimes when you meet folks that's full of generosity, praise God, hallelujah, they won't just give what money, they'll give you their time. Praise God, praise God, they will sow. Is that all right? They'll be a blessing, they'll be there. See, giving is not something we do, it's something we are. So it invades our entire life. I said I want you to focus on a couple of things, praise God. Two more points and I'm going to let you go. Hallelujah. Here's what the Lord says. This is why you can rejoice in being generous. This is why you can rejoice in first fruit. This is why you can rejoice by getting things in order. Because my next point, he will supply seed. Somebody type that in. He will. Woo. <laughs> he will supply seed. The Bible says, I just read it to you in Corinthians, he gives seed to the sower. I come to let you know through the live tonight, you are seedy. Yes, you are. It's a promise. Hallelujah. You should take joy tonight, praise God, and be more aware that you are seedy. 
If you are sower, you are seedy. Praise God. I remind you, hallelujah, that one of the promises that if we seek first the kingdom, he will supply all of our needs. I remind you of one of the proclamations that we lay claim to. I've never seen uh -huh, the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, that's promised presence, or his children begging bread, that's promised provision. Woo, my God. So, oh, my, my, my. So what the Lord is saying tonight, I've given you promised presence and I've made sure you have promised provision. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, that's promised presence, nor his seed begging bread, that's promised provision. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. Hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh has promised you promised presence and promised provision. Never seen the righteous forsaken. I got promised presence. Let me get out of here. Hallelujah. Or his seed begging bread. That's promised provision. Hallelujah. Somebody type in, I am seedy. I am seedy. Yes, I am. Hallelujah. Just type, if you was in church, I'd say, look at your neighbor and say, hallelujah, you are seedy. But why don't you type in, it says, I am seedy. I'm full of seed. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Hallelujah. Praise God. You, I don't care. Don't you let the devil discount you. Don't you let the enemy tell you who you're not. You got so much to give. Yes, you do. You have so much to offer. There's wisdom on the inside of you. There's knowledge on the inside of you. There's revelation on the inside of you. There's information on the inside of you. There's wealth on the inside of you. You are seedy. When you open up your mouth and speak the right things, you are your word are seeds. You are seedy. You are seedy. I, I'm seedy. I'm seedy. It's on the inside. Hallelujah. See, this levels the playing field regardless if you're rich or poor by society standards or by your own evaluation. The truth is, the Bible says, he will supply seed. Woo! So all that God is bringing in my life ain't just for me to have. But part of the provision God is bringing in my life is for me to be seedy. <laughs> Woo, he didn't bring them into the land and give them first fruit and the first harvest just for them. Hallelujah, but I want you to be seedy, praise the Lord. And we need to get this. When you begin to recognize that you are seedy, this destroys the victim mentality. This breaks that poverty spirit. This breaks the spirit of lack. This breaks the argument that says, I have nothing. I'm not positioned to be generous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It breaks the argument that says, you don't know my bills. You, you, you don't know. You, you, you don't know. Praise God. Or that attitude. Hallelujah. Praise God. He promises if you have a heart, if you got to want to, to be a blessing, he promised that you will have ample seed. He said, I give seed to the sower. I come to prophesy tonight, you are seedy and you have something to sow. I come to let you know tonight, praise God, you are blessed somebody. <laughs> I don't care what it looked like in the natural. I don't care what you've been through. I come to let you know in February of 2021, you are blessed somebody. I'm looking at you on this live tonight, hallelujah, and I don't care how much money in your pot, you are blessed somebody. And you got to walk in that. You got to walk in that. You got to walk in that. You got to want the blessing. Woo, you got to want the blessing. See, the Bible says money is a defense. Praise God. Why wouldn't you want a defense in your spirit? Is that all right? Hallelujah. Especially when you have an enemy that's a thief. Praise God. God is raising you up. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against the enemy. Hallelujah. And here's my last point tonight, and I'm going to let you go. Praise God. He will supply enough seed to share. That's what the scripture says. Go back and read it, that you have enough in every situation. Not just to have, but to give. The writer actually tells us how much seed God will give us. Somebody said, ooh, that's cool. It's millions. 
hundreds of thousands, multiple cars, extra houses. Now, now here's the amount. He will put enough in your hands that you can actually respond, watch this generously in every situation. He'll put enough in your hand that you can respond in some measure generously in every situation. So since he promises to give us enough to be generous in every situation, we can conclude that if we aren't generous in every situation, then the amount of seed we currently, hallelujah, have isn't the issue. God says, I'm going to make sure you have something to give. Somebody say, I have something to sow. See, the devil has blocked our minds out saying we don't have enough. We, we erase that tonight. We, we burn that by, 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 by the fire of the anointing tonight. Somebody say, I have something to sow. See, the real pressing issue is whether or not we're willing to release it rather than consume it all for ourselves. And you got to look at what's coming into your life and say, oh, part of this is to be a blessing. The promise to provide enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to submit to you, most of us have more than we need. We simply don't want to share because we haven't recognized the many times of what we have and we're hanging on it too so not so tightly. Hallelujah, praise God. But you have to move into the place, no God, you give seed to the sower. Hallelujah. And you got to say, God, what you're bringing to my life is not just enough for me. Praise God, but it's enough to be a blessing. Scripture says, I give you the power to get wealth, not just for you to sit to have wealth so that I can establish my covenant within the earth. I'm blessed to be a blessing. And you got to change your mindset. I'm blessed to be a blessing. I can't get nobody. I said, I'm blessed to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a blessing. And I got to start on the level I'm on. I'm blessed to be a blessing. Come on. Come on. Tell, tell somebody, I, may, I might can't take you to Papa Do's, pray, but let me bless you. Praise the Lord. Come on. Let's drive up to McDonald's. Pray. I got you what you want. Anything you want in that break menu. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anything you want in that break menu. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Act like a baller anyway. Anything you want in this break menu because I'm blessed to be a blessing. I may not have much, but I'm blessed to be a blessing. Come on here. Come on here. I'm blessed to be a blessing. In spite of what I have, I'm blessed to be a blessing. Praise God. Even with my little, I'm not even going to be stingy with a little. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because if you can be faithful with a little, glory to God, he can make you rulers over much. Hallelujah. And you got to write the vision. You got to make it plain. Praise the Lord. I'm blessed to be a, even if it's a little, I'm blessed to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a blessing. Praise the Lord. I'm blessed to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you can't give up on your vision. God says, don't give up on your vision. I'm closing. <laughs> I'm closing. Praise the Lord. Come on, act like a baller. Say, come on, let's go to Popeye's on Tuesday. I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. What you want? I got you. So you got to work within your measure. You got to let your now prophesy to your later. Woo! My God, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah. See, you want somebody to sow into you, but you got to keep a vision for yourself. What you make happen for somebody else, God will make happen for you, hallelujah. See, you want, you want people, praise God, you want people to sow into your work, but you won't sow into another man's work. Well, they ain't got it like that to sow. Shame on you. He gives seed to the sower. Hallelujah, praise God. The generous will be made rich, praise God. You know how you get out? You sow your way out. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. You, you sow your way out, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You sow your way out. I told you, the harvest is God giving you what you want to happen and what you want to possess. That's what the harvest is. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So even when I'm sowing my first fruit, praise God. Hallelujah. I'm saying, God, I want to give the best of my ability because the harvest is what I want to happen. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The return. I'm trying to do the best that I can because I'm in expectation and I want to be a blessing. I want to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can't keep thinking small and want a big return. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't give up on your vision. Don't, don't stop sowing. And here, some of you got vision out there, don't stop sowing. You got to finish your sowing assignment. Sometimes God gives you an assignment to sow. Whatever I have to do, praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Somebody, you know, messaged me last week, said, listen, Bishop, I want to go ahead and sow this seed now, praise the Lord, because I don't want any mishaps. I want to make sure my seed is in the ground. You got to hold fast the vision. 
And for some leaders out there, some pastors out there that may be watching this or maybe watching the replay of this, the Lord told me to tell you, your vision didn't die. The people you trusted to carry it out had their own agenda, but your vision didn't die. Hallelujah. And God says, I'll separate the wheat and the tares, but your vision is still going to stand. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Somebody may have dropped the ball, but the vision still stand. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some of you may have had some ministries or some auxiliaries fall away, but God said, I'll send somebody else. I'll cause that mantle to be picked up again. Praise God. The vision is but for an appointed time. Your vision didn't die. You just trusted. You had it carried out with the wrong people. Some of you entrepreneurs, praise God, sometimes you just stepped out in the wrong season. You had the wrong connection. But here's what the Lord said, you are seedy. I want to challenge you as I close. I believe God has already done what he said he would do. But you got to realize what he's done. Do it on the level you want. And say, even in this, I'm seedy. I'm seedy. Yes, I am. I'm seedy. I, I dare you. I dare you, praise God, to walk around your home and begin to look at everything and say, you know what? Hallelujah. Look at everything you see as a seed. Look at your bank account and see, mm, seed. <laughs> look at your calendar, praise God, and see some extra time and see it as a seed. See, he gives seed to the sower. See, we always look for something to come, but you got to work within your measure. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Praise God. See, the seed will be required to feed you and yours, praise God, at the commands that God wants to do it because you are seedy. He gives seed to the sower. How you a sower and they never got no seed? Jesus. There's enough seed in your life. Here's what I'm telling you, and I prophesy. And I pray that God opens up your eyes to see there is enough seed in your life to be a blessing to the kingdom. There's enough seed in your life to be a blessing to somebody else. Hallelujah. There's enough seed. You think it's not enough seed, but there's enough seed in your life to be a blessing. What did the widow woman say? Praise God. All I got is this little cake and this little oil. Me and my son going to eat this and then we're going to die. We're going to eat this last cake. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, now if you look in, in the natural, you say, ain't no seed in that. You ain't got nothing to give. Woman, you ain't got nothing to give. But the prophet challenged her, said, bake me a cake first. Put the kingdom first. Bake me a seed first. Put the priority. Let God know I'm depending on you first. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And she baked the cake for the man of God. Is that all right? She put the kingdom first. And her and her son did eat. And they had provision to go on and on and on and on and on. Because she was seedy even when she had a little bit. I come to let somebody know you got something to offer. You got something to offer. I want you to respond tonight. You got something to offer. Here's what I'm saying. Do you see yourself as seedy or do you see yourself as needy? Ooh. Do you see yourself as seedy or do you see yourself as needy? Not wanting, but needy. And I don't care, folks, no matter what season you're in. I feel the anointing on this. I don't care what season you are. Some of you are sowing already tonight. Glory. I don't care what season. I don't care what season of your life is. You got to let folks say, I ain't needy now. You got to let folks know, I ain't needy. No, no, no. I I'm content in what God is doing in my life. I ain't needy. You don't want to walk in relationships. They say, oh, you just a needy woman. No, I ain't needy. I'm seedy. <laughs> I, can, <laughs> I know what I'm working with. Praise God. I know what God has blessed me with. No, no, no. I ain't needy. I'm seedy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ain't got to beg for nothing. That's not arrogance. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm seedy. I still got something. On my worst day, I still got something off. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's seeds on the inside of me. Praise God. Hallelujah. I ain't needy. Hallelujah. No, you so seedy, I prophesy you will never be needy because he always gives seed to the soul. You, you got to flip that thing. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you got to flip your mindset. Oh, you just so needy. Praise God. No, 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 no. You a king's kid. You seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't, don't ever get it twisted. E- even if I'm broke, I, I still ain't needy. Praise God. Even Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even if I went through a divorce, I'm still not needy. Pray, even if I'm by myself, don't get it twisted. I'm still not needy. Even if I've been rejected, I'm still not needy. Don't. Mm-mm. I'm seedy. <laughs> I know that's right, Evangelist Baptiste. I'm very seedy. I know, I know my worth. I know who I am. I know what's on the inside of me. No, ye not. Praise God. The kingdom of God is on the inside of you. I'm seedy. Don't get it twisted. Just because they rejected you, I'm still seedy. Just because they laid me off, I'm still seedy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just because I lost them free, you just need it. Just all your friends walked away. No, no, no. Don't get it twisted. No. Mm-mm. Hallelujah. Some folks just come into your life for a season anyway. Don't get it twisted. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I come to let somebody know you don't have to be hard up for anything. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. P- P- Paul said, Woo, my God, in whatever state I'm in, I've learned to be content. I ain't needy. Whether I'm a base, whether I'm bound, whether I have, whether I don't have, praise the Lord. I'm seated. I still got something to offer. Praise the Lord. And see, when you start thinking like that, that breaks low self esteem. Praise God. That breaks condemnation. That breaks loneliness off of you. My God, it's some more people need to be on this live to hear this word tonight. Praise God. You begin to understand your worth. You begin to understand your value. Even if I lose everything, I got more than enough to start over with because I'm seedy. My God, hallelujah. I'm not needy. Hallelujah. He said, I won't have to beg. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not needy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. And anybody that just see you as needy don't have the revelation of who you are. And you might need to just cut them off. Praise the Lord, because you don't see my worth. You don't see my value. I'm sorry you see it that way. I know who I am. And I am who I am by the grace of God. Get in order. Father, I release your anointing. Glory to God. Ah, thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. That's right, Robin. I got King Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I release your grace to your people tonight. I release the flow of the anointing tonight, the flow of priority, the flow of proper order tonight. Hallelujah. You give seed to the sower. I thank you. I'm I'm, I'm talking to, I'm looking through this camera at some blessed people because they are sowers. I'm looking at some people who are not forsaken because they are sowers in the name of Jesus. They're not needy. No, no. We're seedy in Jesus' name. There's wealth on the inside of us. There's prosperity on the inside of us. And we're very seedy. In the name of Jesus, bless us. Prosper us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing. I pray this word was a blessing you tonight. Listen, we're going to sow tonight, but listen, I want to challenge you. I want you to take first fruit very serious. Some of you visitors that are on this live tonight, some that may not be a part of this ministry, I want you to set in your heart, praise God, that you're going to join us on March 7th and sow a first fruit seed. I'm not saying this to get something from you. I'm saying it to get something to you. Break up in your mind, praise the Lord. Go before the Lord now and ask him what would he have you to sow. Praise the Lord. Whether that's one day's pay, one week's pay, or one month's pay. If you can't do one day, do two or three days. If you can't do quite a week, do two or three days. Praise the Lord. It's one whole offering because it represents one harvest. It's just representing and signifying, Lord, I acknowledge you as first in my life. You need to get in on this anointing. Be seated, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you don't get paid like that to have a day's pay, if you own, if you own uh, uh, praise the Lord, uh, uh, commission, you, you set in your heart what you want to sow. Asking the Lord to do, and I'm telling you, it's a principle that works throughout the Word of God, and it'll go cause the blessing to rest upon your house in Jesus' name. But we got to do it in order. Do it in order. 